Okay, hi everyone and welcome to the Stennis podcast. Today uh, I'm here, Leo, with uh, Dennis and we are going to talk about uh, the one arm pull up. Uh, the one arm pull up is, in our opinion, a very underrated skill. And if you follow any skills competition, you will notice that it's really rare to see these skills performed. In general, today we will talk about uh, how difficult it is to perform the one arm pull up, uh, if it's possible for everyone to achieve it, what are the main compensation, the main errors that we see in the one, when performing the one arm pull ups, uh, how to train to achieve the one arm pull ups, and we will also t uh, talk a little bit about uh, some uh, advanced periodization. Uh, you are very lucky because uh, Dennis is uh, very strong in one arm pull up, or at least he was strong. I don't know how is how he's doing in these days. And yes, so we can start. So Dennis, uh, is the one arm pull up? a difficult or an easy skill to achieve? Mm, so I think that like with like every every skill, for some people it will be easy and some people it will be hard. Uh, what I think uh, with the one-arm pull-up is quite some people can do one, but uh, you see very rarely people doing uh, them very well. So just pulling a one-arm pull-up uh, some way or another with a lot of compensation, with a lot of kicking, with a lot of swing with the hand um, is quite easy for most people. Most people that can pull a certain amount of weight manage to throw themselves over the bar somehow. Uh, but very rarely people can really control the movement, uh, have a nice activation in the beginning, uh, pull with the elbow nice and close to the body and uh, stay very straight with the pod body and close uh, without throwing the head over the bar. So I think generally it is actually a quite difficult skill to learn, especially it's difficult to learn it well uh, without getting injured. Um, like always, uh, for some people it will be easy and for others it will be difficult. Um, this is probably the movement I am the strongest with uh, that I was gifted with almost genetically. Um, for me, the one on pull up was never something special. And when I started training calisthenics and I never did weighted pull ups or anything like that, I had maybe 30 pull ups or something like that. And I just started training for the one on pull up and it just worked somehow. I used the climber method. And then at certain point when I could do a few reps with one hand on the shoulder, I decided to pull the one on pull up and it went very well. Um, and I had three one on pull ups in just a few months after that, uh, which is extremely rare. To learn it, to do well though, uh, I only started after getting into coaching with Leo uh, and to learn the right activations and pull it um, the right way. And that took uh, quite a while to, to fix just the technique and get all the compensations away. And then I managed to reach, I think nine or eight, something like that, one on pull-ups per arm, uh, done quite well. Uh, nowadays, um, I'm cutting, so one on pull-ups are starting to work extremely well again. I probably have around five per arm again, something like that. So uh, I'm way heavier than I used to be. That that makes the biggest difference in one on pull-ups for me. Like I reached a point where one was difficult uh, when I weighed like 12 to 13 kg more than when I, I pulled a lot. So that's something that we will take into consideration too uh, when programming the one on pull up and we'll talk about it later. And um, yeah, this is my opinion. I feel like uh, it's it's uh, one of the skills that's most stuperated almost in, in the sport. Like you see so many people doing them wrong and it's actually such a beautiful skill uh, when, when done right. Um, so easy or hard. It's always difficult to tell. Some people, planche is extremely easy. For some people, the front is extremely easy. And for, for others, the one on pull up. But if we look at our clients, many want to achieve the one on pull up. And uh, if you don't have the, the genetics for it, it's a long way to get it, especially if you want to do it injury free. Yes, a question that we uh, get quite often if is if, uh, for example, 
since uh, also the front lever it's a pulling skill what it's uh, usually easier what is harder between the front lever mm -hmm. and the one arm pull up and of course this is also a uh, a genetic things, leverages play uh, a huge role, but in general, uh, we see that uh, it's easier to achieve uh, the front lever. Yeah. So we have uh, we have way more clients that are able to perform the front lever, and yes, this is why uh, I hardly understand why in competitions uh, we see such a huge amount. Uh, of front levers and very uh, few one arm pull ups. And you know, in competition, you expect the best athletes in the world. So you want to see hard things perform. So yeah. this is really strange, in my opinion. I don't know what you think about it. I think in the calisthenics world, the one arm pull up, maybe it just doesn't feel as spectacular to most people. While from the outside, people that don't do calisthenics think, dude, uh, it's difficult to do. They think it's difficult to do one uh, one pull up, like one arm pull up is um, is uh, is incredible. But in the calisthenics world, I think it's just skills like planche and front lever just get more attention because I don't know they they I guess look nicer or you look like you're you're flying in the planche or things like that. Or the one arm pull up is extremely straightforward as a movement, and I think just if you do it technically very right, it can look like it can look like it's incredible and and this uh big um big force expression that that it actually has yeah yes and uh, what are the main errors that we see uh when performing uh, uh the one arm pull up so uh uh basically they are for the majority of them they are very the same that we do uh when we perform pull-ups normal pull-ups but yeah. uh we don't know how but it seems that while you must perform uh normal pull-ups with perfect uh, form for one arm pull-up everything uh, it's allowed so yeah. the most common the in my opinion the most common two errors are the keeping with the legs it's really really common mm -hmm. uh, in particular in the last part of the one arm pull up when we try to uh, close the moment so to get with the chin over the bar and yes the other thing is that the majority of one arm pull ups are performed half half from for me the most spectacular thing is to see the athlete that arrives here nicely up and goes ahead with uh, uh with the head so I think that are the two main uh, errors for what regards uh, the one arm pull up. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, Dennis, if you want to talk about the other ones. Yeah. Like, I mean, from the pull up, we know the, um, the scapular depression in the beginning of the movement that almost nobody does on the one arm pull up. They just pull completely out of the arm in the beginning. Um, or they end up in a very strong elevation of the shoulder when closing the movement. Uh, where keeping the shoulder down is extremely difficult and takes a long time. Um, that's why it's quite injury prone as an exercise too, and there's an enormous stress on the elbow. Um, the keeping, just as you said, with the hand, with the legs, uh, the turning in towards the bar, uh, this is a bit more advanced as, as a mistake and it's not possible for everyone to stay very straight when pulling it, but the goal would be to pull it as much um, as a um, uh, pull-up, a normal pull-up as possible without turning into it and getting into the neutral grip because that makes the exercise 10 times easier. If you start with a neutral grip, um, it will be easier too because the closing of the movement in a pronated position is way harder uh, than in a neutral position. You can try the same thing with pull-ups. Neutral grip pull-ups, it will be easier to bring your chin over the bar uh, compared to a normal pull-up uh, where where the closing of the movement is extremely hard or compared to the chin up because the bicep just doesn't play as big as uh, a role here as does in supinated or neutral movements. Um, and one mistake that many people, like almost everyone does, is when pulling uh, the other arm or it moves freely or it's not close to the body, so it needs to be close to the body. And there's the tendency to put the the shoulder up so the, the arm of not 
not a pulling arm tends to they they tend to save rom by bringing the shoulder up and touching with the other shoulder so they touch the bar with the other shoulder and actually don't really close the movement so they they save like 10 cm 10 centimeters of rom just by touching with the shoulder and say dude I, I i can touch with the shoulder my hands my one arm pull up is extremely high but they actually don't really get with the chin over the bar they just touch by by bringing the whole body up which creates momentum too which uh, makes the movement easier so as you can see uh, the possibilities like to uh, to to cheat on this movement are enormous uh, and very few people do do it well um, yeah and then the legs typical kicking etc etc all all the things we we already know so doing it strict means straight body depression uh, no bringing shoulder up hand close to the body best is to put it uh, in front of the belly or behind the back and uh, really close with chin over the bar bringing the elbow uh, down in direction of the serratus anterior or the obliques yes i think that uh, especially for someone that it's not uh, really experienced uh, it's really uh, hard to note uh, the error that mm -hmm. uh, uh, for what regards the uh, other shoulder so Guys, just keep attention. When you see some uh, guy performing one arm pull up and the other shoulder is higher, just take a look to the to the elbow of the pulling arm. You will see that the angle it's about ninety degree, sometimes even less, and this is way easier. It may seem that he got high, but uh, in reality, it's not. Just uh, start look uh, start looking at uh, these factors, and yes. You will start to notice that kind of uh, compensations and uh, a couple of years ago i was judging in a competition in italy mm -hmm. where uh, we introduced the one arm pull up and uh, the criteria uh, the criteria were really really strict to perform them and uh, but on the other side it's really hard for a judge to uh, look at all the compensation at the same time and this is why for every single athlete uh, we were five judges in order to uh, look uh, at the right execution. I mean, maybe five, it's a little too much, but for sure three judges are necessary if we want to perform, uh, uh, oh. if we want to organize a one arm pull up uh, competition and with the, proper uh, yeah. criteria. And there you saw like how people that had eight, nine, ten one arm pull ups usually uh, actually just got three or four uh, valid ones because it makes such a huge difference. I think. Yes, yeah. it's, <laughs> yes, uh, is uh, training videos and then uh, competition. So in yeah. training eight, 10, uh, one arm pull ups. And then I don't know how, but in competition, one, two, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yep. Well, very nice. I think, I think we're through with the compensations. Uh, yes, we can move forward. And another classic question uh, is, when and how can I start to train for the one arm pull up? Okay, so well, the answer to that isn't very glamorous. Um, you start training for the one arm pull up as soon as you start training for the pull ups. In fact, most uh, clients of ours have one arm pull ups as a goal. Uh, almost everyone I could say. Um, and we with like, we only work with pull-ups in the beginning uh, until they're strong enough. And there is no magic number that with a certain percentage of weight that you can pull, um, you're ready to pull the one-arm pull-up. There's people, usually people that can pull their own body weight uh, can do a one-arm pull-up uh, just like that, but it isn't a given and it isn't a must. Um, and in the internet, you find numbers from 60 to 80%. Usually we don't look really at the number. We look how the, the person performs. There are certain people that you see when they pull a certain weight, you see, they pull as a unit, they, they activate all the muscles correctly. They have a good feeling for the weight and they almost like dominate the weight as to say, uh, even if it's just maybe 50 kg and they weigh 65 or 70, um, and 
these people usually, and they have no problems with elbows, etc., etc. These people are usually ready to start training for the one arm pull up. So, how do we train for the one arm pull up? Well, um, we 90% of the work we still do on weighted pull ups and we keep progressing on those since uh, it's way more linear and way easier um, to implement because you have uh, a two arm movement where less compensations are possible, first of all where you can put weight on uh, week by week and uh, the progress is way more objective than if you would do all the work on the one-on pull-up where 10,000 compensations are possible. And we keep the, the one-on pull-up technical work very limited, uh, usually working with um, Archer one-on pull-ups uh, with a ring. So there's diffic different difficulties that you can use. You can put, put it on elbow height, um, you, or same height in the beginning, elbow height, and then shoulder height, um, depending where this, it is. Uh, yeah, this is for the for the assistance arm. So yeah, uh, you know. we have to specify the the main arm will still uh, pull with at the bar, and then the assistance arm will use the the ring. Exactly, exactly. And we have different uh, different heights, uh, depending where it is, it will be harder in a certain part of the movement or easier in a certain part of the movement. Usually, um, you start with elbow height, meaning hanging from the bar, you will hang up the, the ring at elbow height, the other arm will be at the pulling uh, pull at the bar. And we perform very little reps. Uh, and very technical. And the important thing is to understand how to pull since the technique of a one arm pull up is different from a pull up to learn and um, create neural uh, muscular adaptations to perform the movement better with time. And once we've, uh, we've, we keep going with the way to pull up, it gets better and better. And then um, when we see that he's starting to work very, very well with the archers, you can move on there too. Slowly, without stressing, we often have just four times one or maybe maximum eight sets per week uh, and don't have any progression on it, uh, just monthly progressions and month per month, it gets, um, it gets harder. Maybe we add a rep, but usually don't go over two to three reps since it gets quite stressful for the elbows. And um, once the athlete is ready, uh, we usually uh, switch to the climber method. Uh, would you explain the, the climber method, so the, the different hand positions we have and the advantages and disadvantages it has? Yes, the climber method, uh, in contrast to the archer pull-ups, it starts to become more specific because uh, uh, you add the balance, the instability uh, factor that is typical of the one-arm pull-ups. And so uh, for the camber method consists of using the other arms, uh, this time the other arm to assist, this time the arm uh, won't grab the ring, but uh, it, will, it will grab uh, the pulling arm at different heights. So usual heights, uh, usually the most common one are uh, the other hand grabbing the bicep, the other hand grabbing uh, between the shoulder and the bicep, and the most hard, the hardest one, uh, the other hand grabbing at uh, shoulder height. We rarely implement the one with uh, the hand assisting the biceps because uh, it's not, uh, first of all, it's not comfortable. Mm. And uh, yes, mainly for this reason, because if you put the arm on the elbow, you will notice that, especially if you have a little bigger uh, biceps, bicep uh it will be hard to close the movement because the other um uh, the assisting arm the assisting hand will uh, uh obstacle it yeah okay, we'll say obstacle it yeah 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 okay the 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 rom of the movement and uh, the advantages of this uh, uh version is are that uh it's really uh, specific, so it's very similar. These the uh, sensations, the feelings are very uh, similar to the one arm pull up uh, without assistance. Mm -hmm. The main disadvantage is for the upper uh, part of the rom because in the upper part of the rom, uh, the other hand starts. Uh, 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 how can I say? It's in the way, like. Yes, uh, it's, it's, in, it's the in the way of the movement, and, and then the assistance also becomes uh, um, more little. 
Yes, more little in uh, the almost, upper yeah. position, other ones. Yes, yeah, so from the 90 degree to uh, the closing uh, to close the the movement. Yes, and yes, this is, I think are the main yeah. uh, the main uh, features of yeah. this method. Uh, I think that we can also cover the uh, the assistant with the pulley system. Yeah, yeah. So, so as a probability. Exactly. Um, I would say a thing we do, uh, we like to do, we like to use the climbing method because it's straightforward and very similar to the one on pull up. Um, even though it has certain disadvantages, we use them as an advantage. So we often let people train only in the uh, first part of the run with the climber method. That means they will never pull the chin over the bar. Uh, they, they will only work on that room with weighted pull-ups, maybe put in specific work when they're very advanced, meaning when they're very close to the one-arm pull-up, we will start implementing uh, top position holds and reps with the archer, uh, one-arm archer pull-ups again, uh, because uh, it's easier to weigh, uh, work on the upper part of the room there. Um, and we only let people use the half rum pull-ups for a very long time since uh, the risk of injury in the upper part of the rum from the 90 degree on is extremely high. So it goes exponentially higher and therefore making someone extremely strong in the lower part of the rum, doing some more work for the upper part of the rum in weighted pull-ups um, or then uh, adding some ring work that is maybe not as stressful is usually the best way to go. Meaning if you manage to lock out very well and you have a good speed when you go on top, um, you can close the movement if you have trained that range of motion in other, uh, other ways. And one of the best ways to probably do it, um, which is a bit fancy, is the pulley system. So uh, I think the pulley system can be used as um, we said in the, in the Q&A already. Um, as a movement to to uh, do instead of the archer uh, one-arm pull-ups. Like people could bring all the progression they do in the archer, so the technical progressions, uh, do them with the pulley system where they have like uh, a band going over the bar and a weight on the other side and they hold with the assisting arm uh, the, the, the band or, or the rope, whatever and they always keep it in the same position and try to do the one and pull up like this. Uh, thing there is, there are compensations that can take place. For example, in the last part of the movement, you see people pulling the weight down to give them uh, extra boost. So it's super important. They keep it always in the same position and they don't change that position. Um, and it's quite difficult to set up if you don't have your own home gym and the whole equipment available. Uh, do it in, in another gym, it's just easier to use a ring uh, and it's more straightforward. Um, but especially, I think, for the closing part of the movement, so the last part of the ROM, to train that in a good way, um, you can use that. Maybe with some cases where people are very stalling to close the movement, you can use a loop band that you pull very close to the body, but there it's always difficult to, to see how much strength you use to actually close the movement and people tend to, uh, to compensate a lot. Here we're talking people that are 2% away from the one on pull up and they maybe just need a tiny bit of help. Uh, to get over the bar and where they know they just grab the, the, the band with two fingers and, and really just focus on closing the movement and not helping them too much and keeping that consistent so they can get better over time. So there you can get a tiny bit more fancy, but it's just the last step. 90% of the work uh, gets done by weighted pull up and some technical work uh, to stay safe. And only then you can work and approach the last part of the movement and do it controlled. Don't just throw yourself over the bar like a crazy man. Yeah. One thing that, uh, uh I would also like to, uh, cover is, uh, since, uh, we, uh, almost all know that the most important thing it's tra in training, it's specificity. Uh, why then don't uh, train, uh, if our only goal is the one arm plug, why then uh, not training uh, from the beginning with uh, uh, versions that are way, that, that are more specific than uh, 
the weighted pull-ups with uh, the weight, normal weighted pull-ups. So, for example, why then don't uh, use weight uh, in the pulley system, assisting from the beginning in the pulley system with uh, a lot of weight? So, this is a question that uh, also I think uh, it's good to cover. Yeah, I think uh, the biggest point here is mostly uh, injury prevention. Um, Injury prevention and uh, you will have always one arm that is stronger than the other. Uh, only using a system like that will probably, um, you will pull more with one arm and you will have to wait until the other arm gets stronger. And I think at the end of the day, with the risk of injury and the time it takes, it's just not worth it. When uh, getting strong in, in weighted pull-ups is easier, it's more linear, um, it's safer. It's just a safe bet. And if you feel that you have zero problems with the elbow, but like, like you see, it's super individual. We have clients that um, you let them do one art, one, uh, one archer pull up, even though they, they can pull 70 kgs and their elbow just explodes and, uh, and is gone. And there's people that can do whatever they want. And there you can put, of course, more specific work to get them closer to your goal. But you need to know the client or you need to be, you need to know yourself uh, and be honest to yourself. Can I take this? Yes or no? Does it feel good? Yes or no? Uh, am I exaggerating? Yes or no? And these are especially uh, if you have an ego answers that are very difficult to, to answer for yourself. And that's why good that for movements like this, where the injury risk is extremely high, there's somebody uh, looking over your shoulder. Uh, so getting stronger in pull-ups, number one, uh, especially if you need to put some muscle, uh, muscle mass on in the beginning, like uh, use pull-ups, use lat pull, use everything to, to get, first of all, the, the, the prime movers uh, big enough for, for this movement, and then you can get specific. Um, and let your tendons get used to a certain amount of stress. And uh, a 70 kg pull up is still very stressful on the tendons, but it takes you a long time to get there. While like you need to go up kg by kg and you get slowly stronger with it. If you just pull with one arm, the risk that something happens is way higher because uh, there's not so many steps in between. It's way more linear and, uh, and smooth as a line to, to get there. Yeah. And uh, yes. And I would also add that for the archer pull ups and for the climber method, there is the problem that it's they, even in the easiest uh, version, they are uh, really challenging exercises. And we know that for training strength, uh, probably it's a good idea to periodize uh, uh, the training over the month, varying mm -hmm. rep ranges and everything. And the problem is that uh, it's hard with this movement to work on higher reps. So let's say from four to six reps, it's really, yeah. it's really hard and challenging. On the other side, you can, you could maybe use a very lot of uh, uh, a considerable amount of weight for the pulley system, but then, you know. Uh, the movement uh, really loses his uh, specificity, specificity because, again exactly because you are you end up losing specificity again because the sensation and yes the activations are different from the from the real one so yes absolutely this is, i think this these are the main reasons and also the pulley system it's difficult to set up and always to uh perform it at the same bar to put to and uh, yes always to do everything at the in the same manner and so it's hard to uh, to quantify if you are progressing or not or maybe you are just compensating a little bit more mm -hmm. this is uh, the reason yeah. Okay. Yes, I think we covered a lot. Maybe uh, what we can do now is to give some uh, examples of uh, how a training looks when uh, uh, how a training looks during the week when we train for one arm pull up. Okay. Um, we can take as an example maybe someone who is uh, starting to be become decent at uh, weighted pull ups 
and maybe we're starting to implement technical work for the first time. So let's say the client probably will uh, pull heavy uh, two times a week, uh, maybe higher rep range on the first day and then a lower rep range on uh, the last day of the week. So there's enough rest in between if he trains four times a week. Um, and there the main work will be done. Let's say he pulls 40 kg for, four, uh, for six reps on one day, uh, 45 kg uh, for, for four times two on the other day. So there does eight sets of pulling in total. Um, and effective sets of pulling that are quite hard for him and he needs long rests uh, to, uh, to rest up, to, to improve, but still could do one or two more reps. And then we add technical work for the first time. And one of the possibilities here is to use maybe the day in the middle uh, where we put a four times one, um, uh, one arm archer uh, pull ups on rings. And he just does a four times one the whole month. And we just see how the form improves week by week. Because uh, in the beginning, it will look quite shitty probably because he needs to get used to activating just one arm. And then over the weeks, he will get better. Um, this is one possibility. Another possibility could be that uh, when he's more advanced and he will need more specific work, he will do uh, the, the technical work before the, one, uh, before the pulling work. So as a technical set before and almost a warm up uh, before the heavy weighted pull-ups, he will have the technical work in very low volume, in very uh, low RPs, very easy, um, gets him ready for his pull-ups uh, and, um, and then does his weighted pull-up work and maybe so we can add a few more sets throughout the week and get more specific with time. Yeah. Yes, and uh, guys, we can't stress it uh, enough. Uh, a lot of time the clients uh, uh, tell us that uh, on the, the, on the uh, one arm pull up day, the work is too light, uh, the exercise is too easy, but this is uh, the goal of that day. So it has to be easy. It, has, it, it, have, it must have a lot of buffer. So you have the pulling days where you're performing weighted pull-ups, uh, they will be challenging and it's completely uh, okay to have a day where you focus only on technical work and this is usually uh, the fastest way. If you go hard also in the day in the middle with the uh, one arm pull-ups, first you won't work uh, on technique uh, as effectively as you could. On the other side, you increase uh, chances of getting injured. And one more thing, you also don't, you risk that uh, you won't be able to recover for the next hard session of pull up. Fatigue will uh, raise uh, really quickly during the month, and then you will need to deload uh, earlier than, um, than uh, how was programmed. So, and in the long term, uh, this is also uh, detrimental. So really guys, try to focus on technique uh, and that's it, yes. Yeah, there's, there's no need to learn these things quickly to injure yourself and then be out of, of the game for six months and maybe lose motivation and just completely leave it. It's better you give yourself time, you know, it will take time um, and uh, just a few sets per week of technical work are more than enough. Uh, take it from someone who used to, uh, I think in training, I had two times a week, uh, three times one. Um, during the time where I pulled like seven or eight or nine one on pull ups uh, consistently, like in a deload, for example. So I did six working sets a week of singles, had most of the work with, with pull ups, and that was it. And for example, very advanced techniques. Um, I, I know with, uh, with Leo for a while, we programmed weighted one on pull-ups for me. Um, and uh, this only works because uh, I think the only part of my body that never gets injured are my elbows in one on pull-ups. Like they're extremely resistant. And even there, there we programmed extremely lightly. Like I had maybe six sets a week, maximum 10 
uh, with having almost no way to pull up work in that uh, in that phase. And uh, the, we didn't progress one kg per week or something like that, but of every three weeks. And we mostly progressed on reps and then put uh, the reps down and weight up, things like that. So extremely slow over time, even if you're extremely advanced. Uh, otherwise, just you just end up hurting yourself. Yeah. And, and then, and yes, uh, I think that... Uh... Uh, we forgot to to tell is that then how we progress uh, for example uh from week to week uh the thing that we do is to uh because everyone knows that uh, progressive overload is the one of the most important things um in training and what we do if uh, an exercise if the weighted pull-ups are easy the next week we can add uh, some weight so here we apply the progressive overload. It can be two and a half kgs. It can be one and 25 kgs. If you're already really advanced, so the uh, improvements are even slower. Or in some really, really rare occasions, it can be also five kgs, but this is really, really rare. And for what regards the one, one pull up work, it remains completely the same mm -hmm. uh, during all the mesocycle. So this is really important. It remains the same. Don't, there is no need to uh, increase the intensity, the difficulty. Uh, maybe the only thing that you can do, uh, if it's the first time that you are training them, maybe just add a couple of sets once you get used to them uh, in the first weeks and that's it. But it's not a thing that uh, should change. And also I think it's, uh, uh, I don't understand really why <laughs> people don't like to, to work them technically because I think it's rewarding to work them uh, in a manner that allows you to feel the movement uh, in each angle of the ROM and feel all the right activations and yes, I think it's rewarding because yeah. uh, and in the end, it's a sport technique. It's involved and you want to be to yeah. perform all the moment as clean as possible. Maybe another little question. How would you like if we keep it always the same in the first month? How would you change it for the next month if you see that the client is progressing nicely? Like what would you what would you change in that case? If he has a four times one in the first month, what would you do in the second month? Okay, I think that uh, uh, I usually do, the thing that I usually do is to, uh, instead of increasing uh, the number of reps, if there is a slight, if I see that uh, this, uh, the, that the exercise uh, became too easy, then I give them in during the deload week, uh, a test to perform in a variation that it's just slightly more difficult. So maybe you just lower the ring uh, a little and also here perform a single and see how it looks. If it looks solid, we can implement it. If it doesn't, maybe we go with another week, with another month uh, with the same exercise as the month before. There is nothing wrong with that. Also the progress as you become more advanced becomes really slow. So there is nothing wrong with doing the same work for two or three months uh, in a row. Another option can be to add a couple of reps, but uh, mm -hmm. also it has to be seen as technical work. So yeah. I would rather work on a harder uh, version if the form is really, really solid. Yeah. And that's it. Yes. And Remember maybe... always, guys, before inserting something new, uh, test it during the deload week. So you had the deload week to test it. That doesn't mean that you have to die during the deload week because during the deload week you should recover. <laughs> this is the goal of the deload yeah. week. But if you insert a little test, not a max out, uh, it can give you uh, some good insights for what to do uh, in the next month. And yeah, I think that uh, you sometimes people do is to insert a harder variation in the next mesocycle. They never tried it. And then they are disappointed <laughs> if can, they can't uh, perform it. So always yeah. test uh, if you want to insert something in your training. You yeah. you can't uh, make guesses. Yeah. And for maybe clients that are super slow in progressing, you can really take into account maybe to add one rep to two sets of the four sets and, uh, and just get 
uh, get them like work a tiny bit more, but I would never do more than three three reps or so. Then it just loses its purpose and specificity, and uh, has other purposes to to get better. Like if you really if you really have nothing, uh, you have no possibility to pull weights, and you're quite advanced, you can probably do your work on archer pull ups. I think we did it that during during Corona, I didn't have enough weight here, uh, so I did all my weighted pull up work. Uh, with weighted archer, but that's something that uh, most people would just get hurt uh, doing it. Can be a good variation for a month if you see that somebody's stalling on weighted pull-ups uh, or on the one on pull-up, but these are very advanced techniques that you can apply if you really know the client, you have worked with him for quite a while. Um, and um, and there are techniques that work uh, very well when uh, when applied in the right situation. So I think uh, we said everything there was to say to the one arm pull up. I mean, I, uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. Um, if you uh, want us to talk about other topics, uh, just put that in the comments too, or write us a DM on uh, Instagram. If you're interested in learning the one arm pull up, uh, the link to our coaching will be in the description. And uh, you can find our Instagram page, Facebook page, and all that fun stuff, as well as Leo's and my Instagram there. Um, so have a good one. Hope you enjoyed it. Like always, if you like the episode, like it. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, leave a comment. If you don't want to miss any videos, uh, subscribe. We're postly posting uh, stuff uh, almost weekly, so you get notified when, uh, when we do that. Have a great one. It was a pleasure, guys.